welcome to the 311 Griffin YouTube channel. We're going to talk about the Laser Range Finder Designator mode in the H64D Apache module here in DCS. Wags mentioned this in one of his videos, mentioned first and last and when you would use them. And this video might actually be kind of pointless because it doesn't appear to me that right now this functionality is really that necessary to worry about in the sim. I don't personally think you need to mess with this mode at all regardless of your situation and I'll explain why in a minute but really quickly I want I, I just want to say like I might be misunderstanding the way it's intended to be used and and I might be and I don't know why it's not behaving the way I expected it to behave it's either something like the laser dispersion isn't really modeled in the sim or maybe the objects that you might get errors from aren't really behaving the way they're supposed to or might just not understand the way that it's meant to be used. So I, I have some experience, just for uh, comparison's sake, I have some experience with handheld consumer laser rangefinders in real life. I, I have a Leica that I use for hunting. I have a friend that has a really nice Vectronix. And, and there's a Vortex. I know that there are several models out there that have kind of first and last modes. One of them would be a Vortex HD 4000. It has a first and last mode and some other things. I think there's a Leopold that has some of that functionality. Mine does not. It's very simple. You you point it, you hold it as steady as possible, you hit the button, it gives you a range, and that's it. And, and just for example, I'm going to be talking about laser dispersion here and laser accuracy. Now, I don't know what these specs are for the Apache, and that may be classified. I don't know. I did a very small amount of research and couldn't find it, so I just didn't. But all lasers, even though they're a really focused beam of light, they have some dispersion or divergence, I think is the correct term. And so for instance, my Leica is, it has a 0.5 by 2.5 mil divergence or um, rad, radian. milliradian is a mil basically. Uh, it, and, and we won't talk about the accuracy, but there are accuracy errors at various distances that these companies spec in. A mil is one one thousandth of a radian or a milliradian which basically equates to one centimeter at 100 meters. Uh, th that's the way the trig works out. So um, if you have uh, one mil divergence, then that would be one centimeter of divergence at 100 meters. So every 100 meters, you get another centimeter added on. Now, one little interesting tidbit, a NATO mil is a little bit different than a milliradian radian. I always want to say MRAD, and then I say radian, and I mix them together. So anyway, 0.1 NATO mils is really 0.98 MRAD. Okay, so basically the way this is supposed to work, we'll just get right into it now. The way this is supposed to work is if you have a target at a distance, and there's like a tree in front of it that you're kind of shooting through, you would probably use the last mode, and that would give you... That, that would basically tell the software to ignore the bounce back that's coming off the tree, to ignore the echo or whatever you want to call it, the reflection off the tree, and get the thing that's behind the tree. If you have a tree kind of, if you have something set back in some trees, but the trees are all kind of behind it or the object is behind it, you would use the first mode. And I think, um, typically speaking, you would be using first mode because as a general rule, you're not going to be lasering or, or ranging things that are like completely obstructed and, and that you can't see very well. Um, but that that's not always the case. Now, where the first and last mode could really come in handy is if you're tracking a moving target or if you're trying to scan across something. I don't know that the AH-64 has the scan function, uh, but this might really be useful for tracking targets, and I just haven't done a lot of that yet, so that might be why I'm not seeing the behavior. But basically what I'm seeing is I, I've tried to put places and I spent hour, a couple of hours messing around with this using buildings and cars and shrubs and trees and things like that. And and really like I could even range through a tree and it didn't really matter if I was using first or last mode. I got the same distance within a yard of each other every time. The only way I could get errors is if I just completely blocked the target so that I couldn't see it at all. And I was basically using a uh, BTR um, or a BRDM. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. You'll, you'll probably know in the video what it is. Um, but 
uh, parked it in amongst some buildings and parked it in some trees and I parked it in front of trees and I parked it behind trees and I tried to move the helicopter so that the trees were mostly obscuring it or so that there were some leaves kind of hanging out there and what I think is happening is in the sim the laser just goes straight through the trees because the tree leaves aren't modeled I even tried to range through a trunk and the the trunk of the tree was probably 20 yards between me you know closer to me than the than the target was and nothing now i know that the trees are modeled you know there's they they are they have collisions for the aircraft you know but it, i think the laser's just going through it buildings are a little bit trickier because they have hard edges so you know i even kind of like got to where i could barely see the target over the top of some building roofs and as long as my crosshair was like right on the target I got the same range every time no matter what so there's no like dispersion error errors or divergence errors or anything like that um, and the laser shooting through the trees and and so like I said I don't think it matters this is something that I would be interesting if it got modeled a little bit better later on or uh, if I'm completely misunderstanding the way it's supposed to be used, let me know. I'm extremely curious because, you know, th the way it works in real life with the real handheld rangefinders that I've used, that's not the way it seems to be working in the helicopter. Um, so all of that's to say, if I were you, I would just leave it on first. Make sure you can see the target. If you can't see the target very well, you're probably going to be moving your chopper anyway to try to get a better view. Because if you're that obstructed, you can't really employ weapons anyway. For instance, I got good solid range with a tree in the way, but my Hellfire hit the tree, as you might imagine. So it doesn't really work so well unless you can see the target. Um, but as far as ranging goes, if you can see the target, I think you're going to get a fairly accurate range with things as they are right now in March of 2022. Um, doesn't mean I'm unhappy with the module. I think it's a great module. It's great. I was just curious about this, thought I would dig into it, and I wanted to share what I found. With that, thanks for watching. And we will see you next time.